Okay, welcome back, Bhaskar Napte Desaid from the Pharma Growth Hub, and this is the sequence of our interview questions. In this discussion, we are going to talk about five important interview questions related to the linearity study, and this is about the part three. The part one and part two is already available onto the YouTube channel. You can go and check the part one and part two discussions. So the part of part three, what are the questions that we are going to discuss? The first one is, how will you perform linearity for an impurity eluting on the tailing of an API? Now look at the chromatograph. The API peak is quite broad one and your impurity just eluting on the tailing of API. The question is how you are going to perform linearity for that particular impurity. Now you may be thinking what is great in that, right? You make the solution five different concentration of the impurity and then understand its response. But the real challenge is in the real life scenario, your impurity alone will not be present into a chromatogram. Now what is the constraint in achieving the response for the impurity? It is not the detector alone, but it is also the interference coming from the API peak. So we need to replicate. We need to make sure that we will perform the linearity in the real life sense. That means when our API present into a test solution at its test concentration. So whatever linearity studies you are going to perform, for that particular impurity, right, must have the API at its test concentration level. Now look at the chromatogram. Now these are the different levels I have spiked into a solution. Now is that solution only contain impurity? No, it is also containing the API at its test concentration level. The concentration of API is not varied. Why? Because actually the concentration of API is going to remain at its original concentration of let us say 1000 ppm. So what I need to do is I need to make a solution of API of 1000 ppm and into that solution then I need to spike the impurity at the concentration of level 1 and then run the chromatogram. Understand the response of impurity. Then another solutions, now spike the concentration of impurity at level 2, run the chromatogram. Level 3, level 4 and level 5 and then I will understand now how the response is coming up. Sure, my response may get minimized, slightly re reduced because of the interference from the API peak. But that is what I am expecting to happen. And once this is happening, what is the situation? Am I getting the response linear for that particular impurity? So in such situations, in case if you have the impurity eluting onto the tailing of the API, you need to perform the linearity in two set. In the first set, you may be performing linearity for a rest of another impurities along with the API. In the second set, you need to perform the linearity for the impurity only which is eluting on the tailing of the API. And I explained what is the procedure to conduct the linearity in such a situation. The second important question is, how will you perform linearity for an unknown impurity during related substances validation? See, the unknown impurity standard is not available with you. You may be having different unknown impurities eluting at different retention times. But how to make sure that those limit, those impurities will be having the linear response at their varied concentration? Because of the limitations of not having this impurity standard concentrations, you have to take support of the API. So perform the linearity for API and that will suffice the requirement for unknown impurity linearity levels. You can study the LOQ of API and then you can draw a linearity level from LOQ to the 120% of the limit for an unknown impurity level. 
The third question is, what is the significance of a y-intercept? See, as a part of linearity study, you are going to draw a linear line by the least square method, by plotting the concentration across x-axis and by plotting the response across the y-axis. And then you draw a line and the line will cross to the y-axis. It may or may not go through the origin and most of the times you will find the y-intercept. Now why this y-intercept is observed? See, you are, you are saying that my method is linear. For 1 ppm you are getting 100 areas, for 2 ppm you are getting 200 areas, for 3 ppm you are getting 300 peak areas. You are getting proportionate increase in the response. Then at zero concentration, why don't you get the zero area? Now this is the ideal situation where the zero concentration should result into a zero area. But this real situation is far away from the ideal situation. You will never get the zero response for the zero concentration because of this interference from the detector or noise level in the baseline for the chromatography. Your technique is not free from the interferences. Your detector may be adding some of the noise levels, the background noise will be coming from detectors. In case of chromatography like HPLC gas with gas chromatography, your, uh, in case of HPLC predominantly, the reason for variation could be the response coming out of your mobile phase or the diode vent. Now these responses are going to add upon and hence that will deviate from the ideal situation. At blank solution, zero percentage of analyte, still you will end up getting some kind of response. Now this is called as the y-intercept or the error in the measurement of an analyte. So y-intercept talk about the error in the measurement of your analyte. And where the error is coming from? The error is coming from the instrument, your analytical procedure. It can be from detector noise. It can be from the mobile phase during HPLC analysis. Thank you so much.